Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Boogerman, a pick and flick adventure. In the last part, we uh, finished off Boogerville and then went through the entirety of Mucus Mountain, and now we're in the final world, the Pus Palace, which is easily my least favorite world graphically because, my god, that black and green is obnoxious, though I like the purple and black because that's just because that's a good color combination. And Pus Palace is theoretically both the shortest and longest world in the game because some of these levels are very short. However, it's also uh, a bit odd in that, technically speaking, it's also one ongoing level. There are actually no bonuses in this stage at the end of them. Uh, the plungers and pimples you pop are just for score in the levels themselves. There's no extra lives between them. So you have to go through a bit. Though we also get some weird visual storytelling in that we actually get to see the main villain in the background through pictures. Uh, kind of seeing him grow up, the Boogermeister himself, as he's actually named. Uh, he, we, we've technically seen the Boogermeister already. He was the one who grabbed that little radioactive stick during the opening cutscene. Before we continue on, let's actually read the bio for Deodor Ant since we killed him last part. Deodor Ant. Back on Earth, Deodor Ant was known as Warren Laris, a paranoid hypochondriac video game program that collected bugs as a hobby. His favorite collection was an ant farm with real working tractors. During a routine reconnaissance flight, Boogerman ran out of gas and crashed headlong through Warren's roof, smashing the ant farm into bits as he landed. When the ants began to run away, Warren chased them to a large anthill. He jumped in after them, not knowing that the anthill was actually one of Professor Stinkbomb's early experiments buried under the ground, a dysfunctional teleportation tub. As he was teleported to Dimension Excrement, his molecules merged with those of the ants, giving him special ant powers. Attacks, ant I histamine oh, that's bad. Antacid and antenna oh. God, that, that, that's bad, that's bad. I don't know how the hell I killed that pus creature, but okay. I can give this stage one thing though, I love this song. I, I actually realized in between parts why I think I also prefer the Genesis sound uh, uh, soundtrack over the Super Nintendo. It sounds more like puffs of gas, which fits with the game. I may have stated that earlier, uh, but I, I honestly forget. Uh, you don't really get anything in terms of gimmicks in this stage, though. Uh, the most I can say is that maybe some of the levels are a bit long. I think they also have multiple checkpoints in some cases, which I think is the only case in the game of that. But on the whole, uh, nothing really changes here. So I guess I can go over the bio for the main villain, the Boogermeister. The Boogermeister. Little is known about this guy other than the fact that he rules Dimension X commit with an iron butt. It is said that he lost his butt in a recent attempt to duplicate Boogerman's super flaming fur attack with tragic results. It would seem he failed to read the warning printed elsewhere in this manual. Oh, okay, that's funny. Uh, rather than a chip on his shoulder, he's got a booger on his finger and he can't get it off. He's a snotty boy that loves to jaywalk, violate carpool laws, and spit on sidewalks. His favorite saying is, you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Unless you're Boogermeister, of course. Wow, that may have been the worst bio of all because it's just... Kind of boring. Attacks? Unknown. Rumored even to be more vile and discussing the Boogerman on his best day. Impossible, you say? Yeah, that was, that was a thing. Uh, we're, uh, something that is kind of cool, though, about the later levels of the Puss Pals, is that when you get sections like this, you can actually just jump down to the floor, and in some cases, you might actually get rewarded for that, like that cape. Uh, that also allows you to skip maybe about a minute of level. All right, somewhere around there, at least. I think the biggest annoyance about this level is that, oddly enough, for, even for this game, it's very easy to forget where you are in the level because it all looks too much of the same. I mentioned before that that's kind of the big issue of this game's levels, the lack of set pieces, but in this game's, uh, this stage's case in particular, due to the ongoing background, it, it's even easier to lose where you are. Though I do have to admit, something I do like about the stage, those weird-ass warped faces of Boogermeister in the background, I guess it was supposed to be like lanterns or some shit. Those actually remind me a lot of Cool World on the Super Nintendo for some reason as well. Though it might just be the semi-gothic stuff that's going on. Uh, something I'm surprised this game didn't do though because of something that was just so popular to do back then is I'm surprised it doesn't have a boss rush of some sort. Even if it's against like weakened versions of the boss that are maybe missing an attack and some health. This seems like a game that would have done something like that, especially where there have been exactly four bosses beforehand 
and four levels in Puss Palace. It just feels weird that it doesn't for some reason. Not that I mind because I don't like the bosses in this game to begin with, but it's eh, still. Now, something I've forgotten about, and I'm sorry if I actually mentioned this in the earlier part and just forgot to continue doing them, is that every single one of the worlds also has a bio to them. So let's go over all the ones we got. Flatulent swamps. Totally nauseating, dude. You'll have to watch where you step here. These swamps are filled with a phallus of substances and dimension excrement. Trudge through the sludge, wait in the glade, and hope you don't sink in the stink. You can cut the cheese, but can you cut the mustard to make, through it, make it through these haunted bogs? The pits. This world will make your skin crawl. It'll make your hands stand on end and you'll want to puke. You run the length of intestinal tracts as you wind your way through fleshy fields of hair moles and ew. What's that thing? Do you have the guts to go for the glory? Ew. Boogerville. This is a quiet little town as pretty as a peach. Snot! Forget about the enemies, even the buildings can be fatal. These goblins are certainly not architects unless they want to be studied unless they study another stooges. Last time they take tried to take out the trash, they gave up and just moved. It's an interesting place to visit, but you wouldn't want to live there. Can you defeat the Boogermeister's army of nose goblins? Who could? Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, then. Mucus Mountains. Oozing with goo, Mucus Mountains are home to a bunch of buttheads. They don't take kindly to unexpected guests dropping in, but they're sure to help you drop off. You can spring your way to the top, but be careful not to fall. At this height, it's no time to take a trip. Hang in there. Don't make a mountain out of a molehill and drop out. Okay, then. Nasal Caverns. This place is nothing to sneeze at. Lakes of fresh green snot flow beneath, formed by post-nasal drips that seem to ooze out from everywhere. Watch out for the stalactite goblins. They like to drop by now and then. Don't get caught in the snot and blow it, and blow it, or you'll get snuffed. And finally, Puss Palace. You'll just have to wait and see for yourself. Okay, then. That was eventful. You know, it is interesting to look back at what was considered cool in manuals back in the day. Mind you, I would like to see what manuals today would have to offer, but they don't really exist now, do they? I miss them. Not only were they fun to read in the car ride home from getting a new video game when you weren't driving yourself, that is, but they were just kind of cool. Also, I just noticed that's disgusting. Uh, the ropes in this stage, the thing that they're hanging out of is a nose, so you're literally just climbing on snot. Oh. Now, something that is a bit distracting about this stage, at least in terms of getting lost, is that uh, the doors that teleport you similarly similarly to noses in previous stages are also the doors that end the stage, so you might get your hopes dashed about a stage ending a bit earlier than you would actually hope. You know, in some ways, this level also just reminds me of what would be basically uh, Salvador Dali painting in some forms. I almost said R.A. Salvatore, but no, that, 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 that's the writer, not the artist. Well, writers are artists too, but not a di different kind of artists. Uh, I actually forget what's below me at this point. I don't think there's real anything unknown. I, one thing I believe is also the truth about uh, Puss Palace is that I don't think there are any bonus stages in this world. It's just straight through for you to the finish, so you kind of need to watch out there. And here we see me doing what I was telling you guys about earlier in the best advice when it comes to facing enemies. Don't rush forward. Take your time and stop every couple of seconds. Because, uh, oh, otherwise it might take a while. Though, like I said again, this game is a war of attrition. There's basically passwords for every stage that you get, I believe, at a game over. So, it, it, at this point, this game really is just a war of attrition. I believe there's even a password that just sends you right to boss fights. So, this game is kind of kind when it comes to that. Though I forget where, if say you like go and put a password, I forget if this game has like a just flat out continue option, but I forget where that would send you. For some reason, I feel like a continue option in this game's case would probably send you right back to the first stage of a world, and I don't know why. Oh, hey, this enemy. Uh, this last hallway here, or at least one of the last hallways, I think we have one more vertical section and one more hallway after that, is more or less just an enemy rush. They're going to be sending actually everything at you, more or less, uh, with maybe one or two exceptions, so. Yeah. I suppose that's what this game kind of tries to do for new gimmicks as you go through the game. They introduce some more enemies as you go through. But they, even that feels kind of like they don't do it as much as they could because, like, we haven't seen those two enemies since, like, World 1 or 2 in some cases. So I, I guess that's what they try to do, but they could have done with more level gimmicks as well. 
Not overkill with him, like maybe a water world where like your jumping's changed and such, but either way, it's time for the boss fight. Aha! Well, Infinite Booger Boy himself! I'll finish you off, then your world will be mine! Stop my spot, you first! <laughs> Boogermeister is basically just an inverse Boogerman. His attacks are almost all the exact same as us. He has a burp attack that can either be aimed high or low, depending on your location, I believe. He can fire out those little living boogers, which are probably the most annoying thing about this fight if you don't jump on them properly. He loves to jump all over the place, and I think he has a fart attack, which is technically the one that aims upwards, yeah. At this point, though, just do what I'm doing, jump over him when he's going low. Hopefully you'll still have the loogie like I do, so you can maybe get a hit on him and the living boogers at once. And keep an eye out for where he's going, and you should be good enough. Uh, this guy can still be annoying. In fact, I've seen people get hung up on him for a while because they're trying to dodge more attacks than they are to uh, damage him. But if you're playing it well, this fight can be very easy. Or very hard. It all depends. I think he always ends on the right, too. I'll be back. That's Boogerman. I like it, but it's very flawed. The camera's not the best, some of the enemy placements aren't good, the boss fights are just plain annoying in a lot of cases. But at the same time, this game had a lot of effort put into it, very visually especially, and the manual just reeks of charm. It's not a game for everyone, but it is at least worth a playthrough if you're interested in platformers, because it's a very unique feeling game. And I kind of wish it got a sequel to see how they could have expanded on it and refined it. If you want to play it, it's on Genesis, Super Nintendo, and I think some of the virtual consoles, but I need to look that up for a fact. In terms of what's next up, I want to see if I can return to the Nintendo DS for another game before I head into another series on that, con on that handheld. But I'm going to need to see what I can do about that first. I'll get to that when I get to it, really. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this has been on Virtual Console since 2008, so it's a very early Virtual Console adopter. I would guess it's the Super Nintendo version. And while I'd ra I would I think you should all approach the Genesis version more so, because I think it's a bit more, uh, not visually interesting, but the soundtrack fits a bit more, I feel. It's a very juvenile game, but the game itself is fun enough to actually warrant something, I would think. Uh, that's about it, really, though. Uh, this credit sequence actually goes on a bit longer than it probably should. But I guess that's another thing I think the game could have done a bit more with, because I love how high quality the voice clips are, all things considered for Genesis. They could have done with maybe, like, an actual cutscene. Like, the quality of what we had with Boogermeister there at the end. But, at the same time, I don't know what the technical limitations they were pushing with this is. Also, I have to say, one thing I've always loved about this game... The common wastebasket sprite is huge, and I love it. There's so much detail and just weirdness going on that that belongs in a Saturday morning cartoon. But that about covers it up. In terms of what's next up for an LP, let me take a look at my little list here, see if I can spot anything specific that I would like to do, aside from maybe a DS game that's just kind of impromptu. Uh, Adventures of Lolo... Mario 3, maybe? Mario 2 USA? I don't know. I, this little LP list that I have here that I wrote down like six months ago at some point has been mostly just me looking at it like, eh, let's do that, and then I do that, and that's how it kind of goes. Either way, with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night. Take care, and I'll see you guys next Let's Play, whatever that may be. See you guys then.